What's up you guys? My name is Mark and welcome to my channel. What you see here are all the necessary items to make your own acidic copper electrolyte solution for electroplating at home. I'm going to take you through exactly what you'll need, how to make it, and how much it'll cost. Let's get to the video. I wanted to try electroplating 3D printed parts and being the cheap SOB that I am, I wasn't willing to pay hundreds of dollars for several gallons of pre-made electrolyte solution because it seriously is several hundred dollars. So I did the next best thing, which was research and make my own. Let's go through all the things that you're gonna need to make this solution. The first item you're gonna need is obviously copper sulfate. Caswell sells a kit with copper sulfate crystals and brighteners that costs about $200 with shipping and makes about 10 gallons of solution. And this is an absolutely viable option, but it is not the direction that I decided to go. I found that I could get 10 pounds of 99% pure copper sulfate on Amazon for under $40. So that's what I bought. I did run into a bit of an issue when using these crystals, which I'll talk about later, so it might be worth it for you to pay more and get your crystals directly from Caswell since they are an actual electroplating site. Now it's totally up to you and I'll let you make the call on what you would like to purchase, but nevertheless, I'll have links to everything in the description below. The next items you'll need are Copper Brightener Part A and Part B. If you decide to purchase the kit from Caswell, they come with the crystals, but since I didn't do that, I purchased them separately on the Caswell website, which cost me $48 for Brightener Part A and $8 for Brightener Part B. There are a few different sizes available, but I bought the larger sizes because I'm gonna be making about four gallons of solution. So all in all, I saved about $100 by purchasing my crystals from Amazon instead of purchasing the kit from Caswell. The next item you'll need to make this solution is sulfuric acid, or AKA battery acid. This stuff is extremely toxic, so please, please, please. <laughs> If you decide to make this solution, be careful and wear proper PPE. I purchased two quarts of battery acid from my local AutoZone, which cost me about $20. The last item you'll need is distilled water. Do not use purified water or water directly from your faucet or refrigerator. Distilled water is free of contaminants and minerals, and if you don't use it, you will have issues with your solution. I picked up five gallons of distilled water from my local Meyer, which cost me $7.60. Distilled water makes up the majority of this solution, so it's a good thing that it's the cheapest item on the list. I purchased a few other items from Walmart and Amazon, including a 20-quart storage container, which I will use to hold the solution, some nitro gloves, a small cooking scale, and a few pipettes, which in total cost me about $28. The container I got technically holds five gallons, but I'm only gonna be making four gallons of solution because when I electroplate, the anodes and items in the bath will displace the water, causing the water levels to rise and overflowing the solution out of the container. It's science. I'm going to be going through the exact measurements I use to make four gallons of a solution, but to make things easier for you, I'm gonna have the measurements to one gallon of solution in the description below. Now, I did a lot of research online on what the ideal measurements and ratios are for making copper electrolyte, and I found a bunch of different answers on Quora, Reddit, YouTube, and various blogs. I actually tried a few of these recommendations, including making copper electrolyte solution out of vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and copper scrubbing pads, but that didn't work at all, so I didn't film it, got rid of it, fed it to my cats. After spending hours researching and trying a few different recommendations that I found online, I decided to just use the values posted on the Caswell plating website because after all, they should have the most accurate information since they specialize in plating solutions. However, you can try whatever you want, but if you want your solution to work, just follow along with what I do. I start by measuring out 3.68 gallons of distilled water and dump it into a large pot. I heat the water on the stove until I've got a few tiny bubbles along the bottom and sides of the pot, which is about 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. While the water is heating, I measure out 3.3 pounds of copper sulfate crystals using my cooking scale and add them to the 20 quart container. After the water is thoroughly heated, I pour it into the container to combine with the crystals. The heating of the water isn't 100% necessary, but it does allow the crystals to dissolve faster. If you don't heat the water, you might be waiting for a few hours for your solution to become homogeneous. Ha! <laughs> Gay! 
I then measure out 4 ounces of copper brightener part A and combine it with 0.8 ounces of copper brightener part B and add it to the solution. I give it a good stir to make sure that all the crystals are dissolved and everything is combined. Please make sure to take special care with this next step, which is adding the battery acid. I measure out 42.4 ounces of acid and add it to the solution. You need to add your acid to the solution last. Always add acid to water and never water to acid. If you add water to acid, you risk the chance of an exothermic reaction which will cause your solution to boil violently. Please don't hurt yourself and this should go without saying, you should be wearing gloves, eye protection, and a respirator when preparing this solution. I am not liable for anything that happens to you if you decide to make this solution at home, so please proceed at your own risk. At this point, the solution is done, but I highly recommend filtering it before using it. As mentioned earlier, I used copper sulfate crystals from Amazon and I noticed that there were some imperfections in my solution. I'm not 100% sure if this was caused by the small impurities in the crystals that I purchased, but that would be my best guess. If you purchase your crystals directly from Caswell, you might not experience this issue, but I still recommend filtering out the solution before using it. It's just best practice. To filter the solution, I use a funnel, large coffee filters, and a sheet of polypropylene. I pour the solution into the funnel and it drains by gravity into a 2.5 gallon container. This effectively removes all the impurities, leaving my solution nice and clean. When I clean large amounts of solution, I usually have to do it in batches and it takes a while, but it's well worth it to get shiny electric plated parts. One last note is that as you use your solution, you will consistently have to add more copper brightener part B. I add about 0.1 ounces of brightener every time I notice that my plating is coming out a bit dull. So in total, I spent just under $150 to make four gallons of acidic copper electrolyte solution, plus I still have crystals, brightener, battery acid, and water left over to make more. Here's an example of an electroplated Benchy and Star-Lord helmet right after they came out of the bath. If you'd like to watch a full video on how I electroplated this Star-Lord helmet, you can click on the link in the corner of the screen. I really hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please give my video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.